Outspoken political commentator Kim Wa Chung has a BNO passport. He plans to stay put, but has been advised by friends and family to leave. I had never been so uncertain about the future in my whole life because of the rapidly deteriorating political situation and some kind of uncertainty and threats. So uh, I have been warned by many people, you have to consider this. The path to a new oh, life so can be Gavin Mark left his parents behind. He misses the comforts of Hong Kong, but relishes his freedom. Why did you leave Hong Kong? You can't say anything in Hong Kong now. Everyone should have their right to speak freely, to criticize your government. You should be able to do this. This is the human right. In every YouTube video he hosts, Mark shows a figurine. It's a black-clad pro-democracy protester with a yellow helmet and umbrella, a token of free speech, and another exile in the UK. Christy Lu Stout, CNN, Hong Kong. Protesters outside Belarus are turning up the pressure on its government over the arrest of an opposition activist. Rallies were held across the globe on Saturday to demand the release of Roman Pretasevich. He was arrested after Belarus forced an international flight to land last week and took him off the plane. But a top Belarusian opposition leader who took part in a rally in Lithuania believes better days are now on the horizon for her country. Take a listen. I'm very touched by the support I see in Lithuania and all around the world, but it's a pity that it's been a year and we haven't won yet. But I'm sure very, very soon changes will come, new elections will come, because there is no other way. Meanwhile, the leader of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, met Russian President Vladimir Putin for a second time in two days. They discussed the status of the activist's girlfriend. She's a Russian citizen and was arrested with him when the plane was forced to land. And if, getting, if not getting COVID isn't enough to make you want to get vaccinated, how about a flat in Hong Kong or a million dollars? Just ahead, what governments around the world are doing to overcome vaccine hesitancy. To Tilly, when you were little, we decided to go on a great adventure and made a tiny traveling home. It has been so wonderful living simply, not needing toys, but finding magic and natural treasure. This life will always hold the most cherished memories. Keep listening to your heart and never lose your spirit of adventure. It makes you feel like a part of the city. It, would, it wouldn't feel right if you weren't involved, to be honest. You know? we, we like to think we're at the, the top end of the dining scene in Dubai, but we're also very honoured and flattered to be part of the restaurant every, every year. It is becoming uh, you know, one of the, the dining capitals of the world. I'm Stanley Tucci. I'm fascinated by my Italian heritage, so I'm traveling across Italy to discover how the food is as unique as the people and their past. We're hungry, right? I'm starving. Come with me as I taste the flavors of the land and sea. Let's go fishing! <laughs> to discover what the food tells us about the people that craft it wow. and its distinct regions. The maestro is making a pizza for me. Oh, my God. That's one of the best martinis I've ever had in my life. If you don't believe in God, you believe in tortellini. It's like a religious. Oh, wow. This dish tells a story. Ciao, ciao. It has survived the darkest of times. That's the best sushi I've ever had. <laughs> A CNN original series, Stanley Tucci, Searching for Italy, premieres uh. June 20th.
There's an offer you can't refuse, at least that's what countries all over the world are hoping. They're pulling out the stops to encourage people to get vaccinated. Condos, cows, cash, all up for grabs to lure vaccine hesitant people into just getting the shot. Here's Michael Hunt. A catchy rap song about one of the best ways to not catch the coronavirus. Local officials in southwest China's Sichuan province releasing this video to encourage people to get their COVID-19 vaccinations as the country aims to inoculate 40% of its population by July. It's this carrot-over-stick approach that's catching on in countries around the world, at least the ones that have enough vaccine supply to try to encourage people who might be hesitant to roll up their sleeves. And some of the incentives are pretty hard to beat. In Hong Kong, property developers are organising a lottery with the grand prize of a million-dollar flat. But only residents who have received both doses of vaccine can enter the drawing. Less than 20% of Hong Kong's population has gotten that first shot. Yeah, Ashley got vaccinated. Only one jab, though. I'm gonna get the next one uh, a few days later. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna sign up for this. Why not, right? Lucky draw anyway. Uh, let's see. I'll test my luck. Others are less flashy, but maybe a bit more practical. The mayor of a rural oh. town in the Philippines raffling off a cow a month. No shot, no chance of winning. Israel has one of the most successful vaccination drives in the world. It offered free pizzas to lure people to its vaccination centers. A free seven-day pass to ride the subway in New York comes with the jab at select stations across the city. I was in no hurry because I had coronavirus in April last year. And once I heard about this extra incentive, I got even more motivated. To scale up the motivation, some businesses are offering freebies to anyone flashing their vaccine card. Krispy Kreme giving away a free glazed donut. United Airlines has a drawing to win free flights. The first winner, Abigail Buchanan. Ohio just announced the first winners of its Vax a Million lottery. One woman, a million dollars richer for getting vaccinated. I did come up to Cleveland from Cincinnati to look at a used car. And uh, I think buying a used car is still in my future. <laughs> so that's about as far as I've gotten. A new set of wheels and the freedom to move about, both complements of a vaccine scientists wish more people would take. Michael Holmes, CNN. Mm. Apparently love finds a way, even in a pandemic, and number 10 Downing Street seems to be no exception. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson reportedly married his girlfriend, Carrie Simmons, on Saturday in a low-key ceremony as required by government rules. Those rules were recently relaxed to allow for up to 30 guests. <sighs> now, according to the British press, it was a, quote, secret wedding at Westminster Cathedral with some close friends and family in attendance. Downing Street has declined to comment. And coming up on CNN, an upset in the Champions League final. We go to London, where Chelsea fans celebrated long into the night. With the world united in the fight against COVID-19, CGN has developed its latest variant diagnostic test that can simultaneously